Good morning. Good morning. Hopefully y'all can can hear us. Um, we've had issues with my Yeti mic not connecting for some reason. And um, so using the camera mic and hopefully despite the glow behind us too. You with the light the, uh, on over here too. But, uh, yeah, actually you can probably go ahead and turn that off. Right. <laughs> it might help a little bit. A little bit. That'll, that works. That's a okay. Better. Yeah, anytime the sunlight's coming through the window, I know yeah. my class is the same way. It bathes the side of my face in light every every time I teach yeah. during the afternoon because the light in there is bright enough coming in the window that this whole left side of my face is just awash with <laughs> with bright light. <laughs> yeah, in this room, yeah. I've still got to get the uh, other bookcase in here with my plants and everything to help kind of block it. My plants will love the sun and that way I don't have this whole mm -hmm. like, you know, explosive bright white like coming through my window. <laughs> so uh, the theme for this week is uh, exhibiting pride. It is pride month and um, it's kind of a double entendre because I have a pride exhibit launching tonight. I've done, uh, 22 hand-drawn mixed media progressive pride flags, um, which is the regular pride rainbow flag, better light than darkness. Hey, Drac. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely better than the cave. Um, but uh, the progressive flag is the uh, six colored rainbow flag. And then they have put in a chevron sideways on the hoist um, that is um, black and brown for people of color and then the transgender uh, flag colors. So, um, and there's also, I believe part of the black is also for those we've lost to uh, HIV and AIDS, uh, or HIV AIDS. Um, so the progressive flag is kind of what everybody's using now at this point. Watching while I'm waiting to see my doctor. Big prayers. Love you whole bunches. Mm -hmm. Make sure you uh, keep us posted on all the things with that. I'm wishing you blessed. Um, hopefully you get some good news. But um, the exhibit, I'm trying to think. Um, I've also got four of the first symbols that were used, including green carnation, which was worn by Oscar Wilde and became a thing. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, then I have nine other pieces that are all my stuff that's just um, various pieces of, of art in there, four by six, five near a five, five. How many neurologists does it take to figure out Drax's brain? <laughs> right? I don't know why they've got five. Are they all consulting, I hope? I hope, I hope. And I'm making jokes with Drac because Drac is family. So <laughs> this is not me ragging on somebody that I don't know. many as it takes to screw in a light bulb. <laughs> well, last week we had how many, how many witches does it take to find a DVD player? Um, one, because mm -hmm. my same, my cousin Sandy rocks. Um, so uh, yeah, we had, we had those jokes going on last week. Um, but uh, so the exhibiting pride is a pride exhibit. And um, we have a Berea pride event, social event tonight that that is the backdrop for. So, um, okay, good, good, good. But uh, we've got a couple of books. Val's got a couple of books and I've got one that I actually need to reread that I haven't read in a really long time. I will let you go to yours though. One of them I recognize. Well, fantastic. Look yeah. <laughs> I, I love old covers. They're just, <laughs> but anyway. Um, this is a book written by Dan Simmons, um, the author of Hyperion, uh, Endymion, that four book series. Um, this is Hollow Man. 
Um, the Hollow Man is a story about a man whose wife, Gail, is his shield, which sounds kind of strange and interesting. I, it had a lot. Uh, it had ele elements there, kind of like what was put into Twilight, although this was a much older book. So mm -hmm. these ideas where you have a guy who can read minds, he's cursed with this ability to, to read minds, and this person that he's with, Gail, is able to shield him from all of this kind of white noise coming in all the time. And once the two of them get a little bit older and she becomes ill, um, Ill? Ill, Ill. Ill, excuse me, uh, this, the, you know, that feedback begins to come in and um, he seeks isolation. He kind of gets out of like the major areas and things, but then he is, uh, then he witnesses kind of a, an, an atrocity and it sends him on a journey across the United States to all of these various places. Uh, it's rather interesting. Um, I um, have read other, other Simmons. I haven't read this one. This one sounded really interesting. So I picked it up. Um, I just really like the cover on that, with the shell and everything. It's beautiful. Uh, I like how most of it is in one color. But um, the story in general on the back just seemed really intriguing. And a lot of the ideas there are, you know, predate things like Twilight and the ability to like, you know, kind of hear everybody's thoughts all the time. And then, of course, you know, the fact that he's, you know, you know, espoused to, you know, someone who is his shield is rather interesting as well. And what happens when that uh, sadly decays. Um, so very interesting. Um, that was the first book I picked up for this week. Um, Did they make a movie out of that? The Hollow Man? It's possible, yeah. I'll have to look. That's very possible. Because it just um, this title sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah, I, it's it's very possible. I'll have to look. Dan Simmons has written a few uh, written a few things that I was surprised at. Uh, he wrote uh, his first book, I think, was The Song of Kali. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they've got it on here for Hyperion and Summer of Night. Summer of Night, interesting. So Hyperion, yeah. I know. I oh yeah, heard. Hyperion's his his most circulated work, but yeah, and this is it says in coming soon in Dimian. Mm -hmm. So we know this is old. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Hyperion won the Hugo for best novel. Yeah. So. Yeah. Check it out. I'll say hello to Zach. Good morning. Good morning, Zach. In Kima, but not spelt like that. <laughs> old like me. I don't know. It <laughs> came out in 93. Actually, 92, and then this version's 93. Mm -hmm. 1993. Mm -hmm. Song of Kali. Yeah, that's the yeah, one. Song of Kali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I like the cover on that, too. Yeah. I love the cover on this one. This one. I picked up this specific edition of this specifically for the cover because the art is wonderful. I'll show you in a second. I want to see what year. Uh, that's a 1972 I'm printing. I'm saying it screams 70s. Yeah, that's 1972. Copyright printing. 1953. 53 a copyright. Yep. First Canadian 1964. Mm -hmm. And then 1972. Yep. 21st printing. Yeah, it's the 21st printing of the Childhood's cover is cool. End. Arthur C. Clarke. Many of you have probably already read this. Um, it is very Arrival-like in the sequence of events. The third act, so to speak, the, the, the third part of the book is what happens after the people become acclimatized to the idea that there are aliens kind of overseeing them. And, you know, and then when the two interact and... Um, I don't want to ruin the story. So, but there's two sequences that occur before in the first two acts where, you know, the, the aliens arrive, the humans kind of spend that second act figuring out, Hey, what do we do? Da, da, da. And then when they finally just realize that it's not dangerous for them and they kind of go about their lives and they kind of have slowly kind of assimilated to the, the idea that these aliens are going to be their, their kind of overlords then something happens in the third act and I don't want to give that away, but uh, very brilliant, dun, dun, brilliantly, dun. brilliantly written. It's about 170, 180 pages, I believe, maybe about 200 pages. 
can probably read it in a yeah. couple of days, um, depending on okay. how quickly you read. T21. Yeah, I, I can probably read that in three days if I sat down and T22. just read like, you know, 70 pages a day or something. So. And that's actually the... Yeah. Yeah, it's around two, 210 pages or so. There's a, a piece at the end by the mm -hmm. author. Mm-hmm that's in there too but i love the green on the cover i picked that copy up cover. specifically it's a fairly for thin book that artwork yeah i picked it up specifically that for that artwork there's a, a different printing where the cover is blue and it's got kind of this brighter yeah, kind that. of saucer just kind of sitting there and the saucer's kind of in this lighter color and the backdrop is all in blue uh this one i liked more i just like that green and then this like ship kind of coming over the cityscape it's absolutely beautiful yeah, it's so cool. and it was in reasonable shape at a half price books and it was like two dollars three dollars yeah. so i was like yeah i'm snagging that. <laughs> <laughs> so so the yeah. covers the covers pull me in which is why i mm -hmm. i preach so heavily on cover design mm -hmm. um especially on the spine because most books are not what they call face out so you'll see books on a bookshelf most of the time like this i can pick that out off of my entire bookshelf yeah because of, because of the font plain white and that font just kicks you and then yep. this is considered face out so most books are not face out on the bookshelf so you've got to have you know something to really snag them in you know your title and how the spine looks to get somebody's attention to pick it up so mm -hmm. if the spine gets me then i look at the rest mm -hmm. of the cover and then flip over to the back look on the back see if there's anything there and then open the inside front cover if there's nothing on the back to see if there's a summary and then i i crack the book open partway in the middle and if it catches my attention it goes home so <laughs> really mm -hmm. don't read thick books i mostly look at picture books i actually collect uh children's books and i love that they're an easy read and a no-brainer to get mm -hmm. through um so that's my kind of my pleasure reading um go-to is children's books sometimes um picture books um short chapter books like i do have and i've talked about it before um i do have a sci-fi trilogy called binti by Nnedi okafor and um they have um i want to say definitely less than 200 pages i mean the the first book is literally like this i could read it in a day um mm -hmm. but um big heavy thick books like that one leviathan wakes book mm -hmm. which is the first one for the expanse series yeah i've cracked about four pages on it yeah <laughs> put that sucker down yeah, i'm just my brain wasn't gonna take it thick too. yeah and yeah it's not yeah it's very not, huge. not a quick read yeah I found a wheels on the bus drag queen version. Dude, you need to what? send me that. You need to send me a picture of that. Send me a link to that. Not in here, but send me a on Discord. Send me a link to that. Cause that is that That's is fantastic. awesome. I have a bunch of people, because I'm the festival chair for Berea Pride. I have a bunch of people that need to see that. <laughs> mm. And we're actually doing a um drag king drag queen story time. We're calling it something mm -hmm. different because there's actually a group that does that, um, mm -hmm. but we couldn't get them to get back to us. So we're pulling a approved book list um, and uh, to make sure things are correct and Fantastic. all that. The drag queen hips go swish, swish. Ah, ah, ah. I love it. Okay. I'm going to have to look for ah, that now. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my gosh. That's too fun. <laughs> that is too fun. So my book today is actually an old one. I don't even have the dust cover for it anymore. Uh, this is Fairy Tale by Raymond Feist. Ooh. Now I read this eons ago. I have the brain of goldfish, so I couldn't tell you anything other than I, if I remember right, it was like gothic horror and oh. fae. And ah. it's 
really, really good because it's always been one of my favorite. But like I said, with the memory issues that I have on some things, um, I can read a book two weeks later, I can read it again. It's brand new. So, so this is, this is gold for goldfish brain. I've had this since it first came out. My goodness. This is 1988. This first, first edition. Yeah. It's a first edition. My goodness. 1988. And, um, it's, it's just really one of probably my first influences on writing a mad, uh, oddly enough. And hmm. it was sectioned. It was sectioned off in like, it'll start the chapters over again, like halfway through the book, it's October. So, um, just, it's in like acts it's written like it's in acts so again yeah. page 111 it looks like there's months one again there? and is it that, goes or is yeah that just... it goes by months so there's august october oh, okay uh july. july so each okay. one starts over um and it starts with june and there's a big prologue. And then the last section, it looks like there's 43 chapters. The rest of them are all like 10, 11, 12. Um, there's some parts in here that I liked the writing so much that I actually made a little note on the side. Yeah. <laughs> or something. Um, but Fairy Tale by Raymond Feist. Highly recommend. Like I said, I can't I can't remember anything about it to tell you. Um, but I'm going to read. This is one of the ones I'm going to reread. So, but you can trust me on this. It's a good one. And Raymond Feist is amazing. Um, He's written a lot of other things. He's written, yeah. um, He, I mean, he has all kinds of fantasy. He wrote Daughter of the Empire with Janie Wirtz, uh, Darkness at Sethanon, Silverthorn and Magician, which I haven't read. And that was at this point, which was I've seen Magician. Um, didn't he write the whole Shadow War series or whatever that was called? Right. So. Uh, I, I can't remember what that was Maybe called, but I remember by the time I was working in a bookstore, he had a, a row of books on a shelf and they were all different. So mm -hmm. he's been writing a while now, and that's probably one of his first books. Um, Let me see. Raymond Feist. Shadow War or King's War or something. I can't remember what it was called. Um yeah, okay. I think the so, I think there's a whole magician series now too, if I recall. Um, like I said, in 1999, when I was working in a bookstore, we had all kinds Mid of on the shelf. So, uh, Raymond Feist with Stephen Abrams, Midkemia Chronicles of Pog, Chronicles of Pug, Pug, uh, Magician Darkness. Uh -huh. Let's see here. There you go. Servant of the Empire. Yeah. Daughter of the Empire, Master of Furies, King's Buccaneer, Mistress of the Empire, Prince of the Blood, Shadow of the Dark Queen, Crondor of the Betrayal, King of Ashes. Talon Silverhawk. Talon yeah. Silverhawk, Those are the ones Rage I remember. Rage of a Demon King, Bron uh, Crondor, Tears of the Gods. Yeah. Crondor of the Assassins. So apparently there's a Crondor series. Flight of the Nighthawks. These Rift are the ones War. I remember. Yeah, the Rift War series. That's what it is. Yeah. Those were the ones I remember. Magicians uh, and Wrath of Mad God and... into a Dark Realm. Mm -hmm. King of Foxes, Kingdom of Siege, Queen of Storms. Yeah, King of he's Foxes. He's got yep. a long list of stuff here. Oh, yeah. Well, he's been writing consistently. Yeah. You want an author that writes read consistently? Reading order. Uh, often, there's all kinds of stuff from him to read. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a reading mm -hmm. order list on this website. So. Yeah. I love authors that have a chronology, like you can look up what should I read first and it tells you read these in this order, you know, and sometimes the book that you think is first, there will be something that they wrote that was meant to be like, here's, oh my gosh, here's there's, filler for back here. There's been a couple that you've picked up that you got into and then you realize, oh crap, this is like book three or book two <laughs> of the series. Um, this is the one we're talking about this time. This is Fairy Tale by Raymond Feist. It's a really good book. Well, I did that with Wellspring of Chaos. 
Mm-hmm. Wellspring of Chaos is like the thirteenth book in the, you know, the uh, in thirteen is that far in? Yeah, or oh, wow. yeah, it is. Um, the um, the Chaos, um, the um, the Order Mages series of books from Ellie Modessa Jr. Wellspring of Chaos is like the thirteenth book in that series, but you can pretty much pick it up and read it more or less standalone. Yeah, like- I it revolves like around like this one character who's in his, you know, probably mid to late forties, early fifties. He's, you know, established as a businessman. He's a cooper. He's got his own cooperage with like a forge and everything, and he makes barrels for, you know, the local area. Which we have those in Kentucky. We have yeah. coopers. And yeah, which is really interesting. Hey, actually, he for came bourbon. here for the research for that. Oh, he did. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah, which is really neat. I actually um, like to visit. I got one. to meet him. He came into our store and autographed everything that we had on the shelf. And then he went over across the street to the borders and did the same thing. Uh, and I got to kind of stand around and just kind of chit chat with him for about half an hour, 40 minutes. So he's a really cool guy. Um, and I contacted his wife is, him. A, is an opera singer. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I contacted him mm-hmm. uh, not long after Val had finished his first book. And uh, which I have an editor for us for that. Um, oh. But um Mm-hmm. We um I contacted him and talked to him, told him how many books of his that Val had and that he'd met him years before and uh you know would he read and may if he likes it give an opinion or give a, a blurb for the book and he agreed, so we need to get it edited and sent out to him. But I have tons of illustration books. Um, we have like the wall in our living room, probably eight foot, about eight foot bookshelves. One of them's going in here, mm-hmm. um, and they're full of books. <laughs> and then he has the entire wall in our bedroom. I have quite an extensive, well, what was Gaming. now an extensive collection yeah. of science fiction. Um, of things i've still i still have several books back there that i will feature on this uh on this chat you know that i haven't even pulled out yet um you know, stuff by peter f hamilton stuff by alistair reynolds that i haven't pulled out um mervyn peak uh things like that uh other stuff by gene wolf like the wizard and knight the knight and wizard uh, a duology. I mean, I've got a bunch of stuff there that, and none of that stuff is like really big authors that you look at their list of stuff and they've got like, you know, 30 books written, you know, <laughs> a lot of this stuff is a little more obscure, especially the stuff by Gene Wolfe. Stuff for, by Gene Wolfe is very difficult to find sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to find affordably sometimes. Uh, I'm actually looking for the book of the, uh, um, the, what is it, the book of the, uh, not the book of the new sun, I'm reading that now, but the other, um, the book of the long sun uh, is four books, but you can't get the second book with the last, uh, the third and fourth novel in it for often less than like, you know, 13 or 18 dollars, and some people want more like 30 or 40 dollars for that book but it ends a four book series it's just so difficult to get in trade paperback for a decent price amazon wants i I think i looked for it yesterday on amazon they wanted 71 dollars for it in paperback in trade Mm. paperback i'm like are you kidding me? yeah some of the older books are harder to find And so, depending on on how popular they are, mm-hmm. but people put stuff up there for over a thousand dollars without checking or anything. Yeah. They just think that you know, hey, somebody's gonna buy it. Yeah, I've got the um, I've got the uh, Chris Coffer series pulled up here. When people say, someone said science fiction, I think the opening song, Rocky Horror Picture. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, we actually um, uh, Kentucky Theater here actually shows. Uh, Rocky Horror on a <laughs> monthly basis. <laughs> we had a we had a theater in Arizona in Tempe that showed Rocky Horror regularly, like every yeah, week, hasn't like seen every it week yet. or every other week. You know, Isa hasn't seen it yet, so we need to. 
yeah. need to break her in over at uh, Kentucky Theater. But I have the I have the website uh, for that series, The Land of Stories. So I'm going to have to um, check that out because it looks interesting. Ten of Souls, sorry. And they oh, have uh, graphic yeah. novels and some other stuff out too. First one is Tale of Magic, book two, Tale of Witchcraft, book three, Tale of Sorcery. And then there's a graphic novel. Oh, okay. Goldilocks wanted dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I have to check that out. Oh, no problem. <laughs> So we've got a bunch of stuff going on today. I've got, um, I'm taking over the signage for the exhibit. Yeah. So this is progression, pride past, pride present. And that is going to be our title. And then I have a, from the artist about the exhibit. And then I have um about the progressive initiative and a qr code for that for that site because they're the ones that came up with the um actually the oh. pride progressive pride flag came from um came first and then it became a movement that printed out weird mm -hmm. my printer is being weird again it's like shoving stuff over so <laughs> I'm going to have to reprint that one. But uh, author Chris Coffer is actually an actor from Glee. Oh, cool. I actually never, oh, wow. I ever actually have never watched Glee. I think I've seen a couple scenes from Glee. Yeah, I've seen only um, scenes usually. And one of my favorite actresses um, is the teacher. Yeah, and I can't think of her name. <laughs> ah, I know who was, you're talking about. Yeah, but I'm she not was familiar in with... um, Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, she was. The, she did the voice for. Yeah, one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Um, for the Space Marine. Yeah. Yep. I know who you're talking uh, about. I just can't remember her name now. <laughs> I have to look it up. Jane, is it Jane? Yeah. Um. Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch. Yep. Absolutely love her. Mm -hmm. I had the first name right. <laughs> yeah, Jane Lynch. Yep. Eh, too Whoa. much white. Too much white. Too much light. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's a trip. I love her voice. She's got that kind of gravelly, mm -hmm. almost Colleen Dewhurst kind of yeah. kind of gravelly voice. Mm -hmm. Um. Has to make it sounds like a Christmas Carol. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I've I don't think I've ever seen one, but I know that um, there's something out. I'll have to see if I can find it. Um, but there's something. There's something out. And it needs to involve Billy Porter. So I'm sorry. I saw Billy Porter in the newer Cinderella. Oh, oh you hate her character in Glee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know about her character in Glee. I just like the, the actress. I just love her voice. I like her character in Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> I haven't watched Glee. I've just seen bits and pieces. Um <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think of the name of the the Christmas Carol parody takeoff version that was LGBTQ. Hmm. I don't remember. No, I don't. I'll have to think about it. I'll link Not it if I can. I'm familiar with. I'll link it if I can find it. <laughs> She's a mean coach. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard she. From what I've seen, she was like super sarcastic, which she normally is. But. <laughs> Mm -hmm. most of her characters but um but yeah we're <laughs> hanging i'm hanging the rest of the the pride exhibit today 
we have the event tonight uh, that I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be attending. Um, I'm still recovering from last week and I went out, I've had to go out a couple of times um, to take Issa to work and to go to the gallery and the heat here has just absolutely obliterated me um, to the point where, you know, if I go out in the heat one day, I'm down for two days. So it's gotten really bad. Um, and then they have Ren Fair this weekend that I think it's going to be a daddy daughter day because I am not going to be able to go out in the heat and hang out all day. So, yeah. um, but, uh, it's supposed to be 83 here. That yeah. Day, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's supposed to be a hundred and I will be in my house <laughs> and hoping I don't have to take the ESO to work that <laughs> two days i probably will have to thankfully i have air conditioning in my car but it it literally just the sun and i don't mix uh as you can tell by how pale i am um but that's why we moved out of florida and now we have florida weather here so we're gonna have to move to canada so <laughs> although it's it's hot where drax and uh drac is in connecticut too so i don't think there's going to be any avoiding it just Staying in your house and investing in solar and air conditioner companies. It's <laughs> a way to make money right now. Um, don't quote me on that. But uh, we will be back with possibly our last episode next Thursday. Uh, we said we were going to do 33 episodes, and um, unless we come up with some other ideas and revamp and figure it out. That's probably going to be our last episode next week. So hopefully everybody can tune in for that one. I will make an announcement in discord too. Um, just, it was a good experiment. And now we're getting to the point where it's like, okay, which books are we pulling? We've got a bunch of books, but we've talked about most of them and we could talk about other stuff, but scheduling is becoming a, a thing. So, um, so we will, we will see, but we will do something for, for next week, figure out something cool. And, uh, that will be our last one for now until we figure it out. Okay. So until we revamp, um, I also, am going to start posting some more art videos and art stuff on YouTube soon, uh, soon too. So, I'm just going to get over a couple of hurdles. Uh, also, September 3rd, it is official. Two Crows Market is coming to Berea. Uh, Issa and I are starting a vendor market. Uh, I was the co-organizer for the Berea Makers Market the first few years it ran. And uh, then COVID hit, and it is not coming back. So uh, we decided to start Two Crows, which was originally an idea that we'd had um, in Florida, but held off on. So September 3rd here in Berea is going to be a vendor market from 10 to 5 at the Russell Acton Folk Center. So we have mm -hmm. landed the, the building spot that we were using for Berea Makers Market. And I'm hoping to see everybody there. And we will have um, an... Uh, LGBTQ presence there as well because I'm going to have Berea Pride out there and we're going to have mom hugs hopefully out there. I got to contact them this week and see if I can get them to come out. And uh, I've got a, a few vendors and some food trucks that are already a go. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be going to be exciting, going to be a good thing. New chapter. So, but everybody have a fabulous rest of your week uh weekend and we will see you next week my next live stream on twitch is going to be noon on saturday so i'm going to be doing some art possibly some book binding uh, i'm going to be looking at some of the japanese stitch stuff and uh we'll see you then i'll take care stay stay cool yeah. in more ways than one <laughs> wear your mask wash your hands hydrate. and take care of each other hydrate yes hydrate mom hydrate. says hydrate <laughs> yeah we'll see you later Thank you.